Okay, my name is Mickey Buckins, and I'm a uh, singer, songwriter, producer, engineer, percussionist. I have played most of my sessions playing percussion. When I get a call, have many sessions here I've played on. Well, this is home. This is, this is my second home. I love this studio. I love this building and the people involved with it since many moons ago. But it just feels right to me, man. It just feels so good to come back in here. And I loved recording here. That booth right there used to be my booth. I used to come in here late at night and go up in the control room and just stay out of the way. Jimmy Johnson and David Hood and Roger Hawkins would be in here playing. Rick was doing the whole thing by himself at the time. He didn't have any assistance or anything. And so Jimmy and David and Roger convinced him that he needed an assistant and that I needed to be the man. At the time, I was playing with my little band called The New Breed. I needed a day gig, so I came up Rick's office and talked with him a little while, and he said, you know, yeah, I think we can work something out. Uh, I can pay you $50. And just started learning from the ground up, hooking up mics, rolling cables, and, you know, operating the tape machines was my main job. Well, we started out with two slant back Ampex machines, monos, a pair of those, and on this other side we had a two track scully, and that was for the stereo. And the two monos was one main machine and the other was a backup for that machine. We went from two track scully to three track and we thought we were just in heaven. What are we gonna do with this third track? You know, and then we got to four track and then we went to eight track and then we went crazy. We gotta find something to put on that track, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we cut mono, that was all we were after was a great mono mix. We had a two track just for stereo, you know, cause we had to have it. We didn't really care what it sounded like other than decent. We went for that mono mix and we had three big Altec speakers in the control room and that center one was what we lived by. That was the gospel, was that center mix. And uh, everybody had to get their part right because we'd had to start over and everybody got their parts quick because we had some great players. And it wasn't an all day thing on one song, ever. I mean, if we didn't get in three takes, it wasn't gonna happen. And it was usually the first or the third take that was always the best one. We mostly tracked in this room and then we'd overdub in that room. But things have changed now. The awful lot of recordings going on at B now they got a new console over there, it's killer. That room is killer now. We do a lot of, we had a lot of writers signed and we did a lot of demos over there, you know, and kept both of them really going. I mean, it was very, a very rare day that something wasn't going on, you know. Well, of course, this is the, this, this is the sound for me. This room is, always will be. But that room sounds great. I mean, it's, they've got it where it's wonderful over there. And it's just, it's just a difference in size, and it's, it's just a different room, so it has a different sound. But it's the same groove, same vibe. I know where everything was, where everybody stood. I'm very close to where all the artists stood behind two baffles, you know? I mean, Dwayne Allman stood right there. Wilson Pickett stood right here behind me, and so forth. I can tell you where everybody was. Otis Redding came in here and produced Arthur Connolly, and that was a thrill. Being in the room with that man was just electric. I mean, you could feel it when he walked in the room. He was just so much charisma. You could just feel it when he was in this room. Wilson Pickett was absolutely one of the greatest thrills I had working with Rick, being his second with Will Wilson. When I say magic, you could feel it. I can feel it talking about it. I mean, I can feel it. I can feel it all over me. It's something very magical about getting those guys in one room with a great artist and a great song and recording like that. I mean, there's no, 
There, there's nothing even close. I'd say come to fame, man, with, with all your hopes and dreams in your pocket because you will realize most of those right here in this building, in this room, if not that room. But you definitely gonna come in here and get a feel. And if you got your stuff together, you got a good song, you're gonna come out of here with a great record.